I'm the director for The Curious Savage. My name's Hayden, and um, we just want to say thank you all for coming out to our Friday night performance. Um, there will be a small intermission after Act 2 for about 15 minutes. Um, you'll get out of here around 10, so not super late. And we just ask you to silence your cell phones and don't do any flash photography so the actors don't get distracted. Um, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the hard work that the kids have put into this and the talent you have given them. And we pray that we may glorify you for this performance. Amen. Is there a car still out front, Barry? I said, is there a car out front? Barry, Florence is speaking to you. Oh, I'm sorry, Florence. I was watching the fireflies. What did you say? I said, can you see if they've left yet? Oh, I wish I'd been born a cat so I could see in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll wait for her. I'm going to get a book and put in my room. Does your jar hurt tonight, Jack? Not bad. Then stay a little longer. We'd like to have you. Jack, you've already invested 267 minutes in waiting. Surely you can afford another 10 cents worth. <laughs> All right, my statistical friend, but I suppose my curiosity is good for 10 minutes more. I wonder what she's like. Miss Willie says they're one of the wealthiest families in America. Oh, that's bad. She'll have an expensive camera. She can't work. Or rave of an artist I've never heard of. Oh, cynic. Has money spoiled me? Do you have money, Fairy? Bags. <laughs> Let's not be prejudiced about money. Some of my best friends are wealthy. Hannibal, play something while we wait. Help distract Jack. Well, you catch me tuned. What shall it be? Surprise us. How about a Hungarian Sardis? Oh no, Hannibal. Please don't play Hungarian music. It frightens me. Frightens <laughs> you? It terrifies me. I was stolen by Hungarians when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was. Go ahead, Hannibal. Oh, I hope she likes music. <laughs> Maybe she plays some instrument herself. The harp. Oh, I hope she plays the harp. Why, all my life I... I'm sorry, Hannibal. Go ahead. I was way <laughs> My father. Like an angel. Jeff, what are you doing? Oh, there's a book on the shelf that I wanted. I'm, I'm sorry, I will Barry, help Jeff get the books. <laughs> I'll get a chair. No, it's all right, Barry, I, I can get it. No, no, no. Climbing on chairs is women's work. <laughs> <laughs> Men have mountains. Which book was it? Um, the Lifespan of the Age. People give the strangest books to this library. I couldn't get into forbidden Tibet. <laughs> you know, it's amazing what standing above people does. I feel smarter than anybody in the whole world. <laughs> it's the yellow one. Books are in my blood. My mother invented the filing system in the New York libraries. She was called Queen of the Cross Index. <laughs> I'll get Jeff's book, Barry. <gasps> no, no, musicians shouldn't work. <laughs> Be careful, Fairy. Don't get dust in your eyes. Don't you want animal husbandry? <laughs> no, no. This time it, it's got to be the lifespan of the ape. Here, who's that with this? Lights! Turn the lights back on! Don't let me fall! Please turn the lights back on! Hey, get to the lights before someone is hurt. Lights, lights, lights! Please, Mrs. Patty, let us keep the lights on. <laughs> Some night, you're going to turn the lights out at the wrong time and hurt someone. Then you'll be sorry. How I do wish you'd chosen something else to give up for Lent. <laughs> it's unfair to make the rest of us suffer for you to get to heaven this time. Some people like electricity. <laughs> you sit in your easel and leave the lights alone. I will say, Miss Willie, you startled us. We thought we were in the front office. For the love of Pete Fairy, what are you up to? I'm getting a book for Jeffrey with a violin bow. I, I certainly didn't mean to cause all this commotion. Never, never mind, Fairy. 
No, no, I'll get the book for you. Everybody watch his own head. <laughs> Timber! There you are, Jeffrey. You may take the boat, Miss Billy. And you may take my hand, Hannibal. <laughs> the next time anyone wants a book from the top, they may call me. Why the whole shelf could have fallen on you? Oh, who ever heard of anyone being hurt by good books? Enough of them right, darling, and I hate for that to happen. I hate to everything in the world, but most of all, I hate cold cream, hot dogs, codfish, crawfish, catfish, catnip, sheep dip, sawdust, subways, sewers, skewers, buttered up caterpillars, frictions, fractions, pins, puns, pens, policemen, and electricity! <laughs> How much longer do we have to wait, Miss Willie? What does she like, Miss Willie? I haven't seen her. Now let's tidy up the room a bit. Barry, will you put the poor cheesy board away, please? They're taking an awfully long time in the front office. Is she young or old, Miss Willie? All I know is that her name is Savage and she gets the blue room. Well, I certainly hope she isn't beautiful. Competition exhausts me. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I hope you tied that one in a hurry. Miss Willie, don't call me that, please. It's a bad thing my wife did. I forgot. And I wish she wouldn't sing me out the kiss. Oh, well, you are the handsomest. What what would my wife do if she came and saw a strange woman kissing me? She'd explode. She would if I know her. Would you please try to remember? I'll try. Forgive me. Please don't clutter the place, darling. Let's try and make a good first impression. Will we meet her now? I don't know. Oh, we haven't had anyone exciting since that magician's wife. She was all nerves from being sawed in half so much. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? Something hyphenated. I forget. But at least she had flavor. All my relations were so drab. My parents are robots. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't invent such things. Well, they are. Emotionless robots. <laughs> oh, Barry, don't peep. It's so degrading to get on your knees. You get on your knees to pray, don't you? <laughs> I'll say a prayer. Dear God, let me see something. <laughs> <laughs> do you see anything? I do. God was quick. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see? Someone coming out of Dr. Abbott's office. Who? One, two, three strange people. <gasps> They're coming in here. Hurry, let's hide in the hallway and eavesdrop. <laughs> <laughs> Is that ethical, Jack? Oh, you know it'll be sent out anyhow. We could call it espionage. Come, Mrs. Patty, we're spying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for the switch. It's rude to let me set the This is the last time I'll be a party to peeking, Fairy. You know, simply ruins my nightmares. <laughs> Oh, I hope I don't get the hiccups and betray us. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Emmett will join you in a moment. Please tell him that if there's nothing more, we'd like to get started back. Yes, Senator. Um, there are newspapers and magazines on the table. Please, make yourselves at home. <laughs> well, what do you think of it now, Titus? Are you reassured? Somewhat. It certainly doesn't look like an institution. Not at all. Mother will be contented and happy here, I'm sure. It's a charming place. I just hope we haven't made some mistake. <laughs> Darling, the only mistake we made was in not taking steps sooner. I don't like to be thought insensitive. It would have been a lot easier to keep Mother at home with an attendant. That would have been disastrous. <laughs> you're hard. <laughs> Someone has to be practical. No, you're callous. We've married far too many foreigners. Sam, darling, we've done what had to be done. Let's not quarrel about it, please. Lily Bell is right. This is civilized behavior. I'm sorry to have delayed you. I was anxious to have Dr. Johnson question your mother. This is quite the place you have here, Doctor. It's been quite the relief to have found it so cheerful. But then we were assured that your place offered the best that money could buy. Well, we hope that we can offer the best that experience can provide. 
One thing I meant to ask you, Doctor, will Mother be exposed to any danger here? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, the patients in this swing are in their final stage of treatment. Uh, they are all extremely kind and cooperative. Uh, most of them would seem quite normal on the surface, as say uh, yourself, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say. Uh, while you're waiting, while we're waiting, would you mind if I asked a few questions about this, uh, Memorial fund of your mother's? There's little more to tell. She planned on using it to give the entire savage estate. The newspapers call it her happiness fund. <laughs> Was this a uh, indifference to money something new? I wouldn't say so. She's always given money to foolish causes. Would you mind being more specific? Well, there was this Italian farmer who wanted a box of dirt from Italy. Just dirt. Mother spent $200 to get it for him. And there was a flower peddler who wanted a tombstone for his horse. He got it. After Father died, this obsession got progressively worse. Oh, last summer she charged a ship to send a thousand school children around the world. Why? She said they ought to go around the world while there was still a world to go around. <laughs> we stopped her just as she was on the verge of setting up this fund legally. With a board of directors. <laughs> a fantastic board of directors. Not a banker or bishop or lawyer among them. Whom did she choose? A postman, a gardener, a veterinarian, and herself. We should have known her mind was going the day she decided to get up on that stage. That? Have you ever heard of such a case like her, Doctor? What would make a woman of her age suddenly turn to acting? Well, Senator, the, the unique is quite routine here. Nothing quite surprises us. If she had been talented, or even vain, I could have understood it. But she wasn't. She was quiet, even timid. And then suddenly, this amazing change. Grief did it. But why turn to acting, Doctor? Life has enough drama in it. Goodness knows. <laughs> Isn't that right, Doctor? Well, as Judge Savage says, goodness knows. And could you explain that stupid bear to us? <laughs> Obvious exhibitionism. Exactly. She took a child just delight in being seen everywhere with that teddy bear. Anything to indulge the sudden love of notoriety. Her entire conduct was a travesty of dignity and self-respect. And sound business. Senator, could you tell me, has there ever been a uh, similar pattern of behavior in your mother's family? Frankly, I don't know. You see, Doctor, she's not actually our mother. Father remarried when we were children. Oh, I see. But it has never made any difference for her feeling towards her. Well, I'm afraid I can't be much more of a help to you until I've had some time to observe her conduct here. You are the Doctor. And we know she'll be comfortable in such a charming place. I wouldn't mind staying here myself. <laughs> this is no place to laugh, Sam. Uh, no, but we, we encourage laughter here, Senator. We think it healthy. You do? Well, of course. It's good therapy. For, as Byron says, and if I laugh at any mortal thing, tis that I may not weep. Of course, of course. I beg your pardon, Dr. Emmett, but Dr. Johnson won't be able to complete Mrs. Savage's file for the moment. Well, why not? He finds her a little uncooperative. Uh, will you bring him here, from here, please? Of course. While you all are saying your goodbyes, I'll have a quick talk with Dr. Johnson. Oh, please don't go, Doctor! Please, Doctor! We prefer you stay. We think the quicker we make this, the better for all concerned. She's vindictive. And for some reason, Doctor, she holds me responsible. <laughs> we'll have to give her a little more time to get over her resentment. Will you come in here, Mrs. Savage? Mrs. Savage, please, sit down. <laughs> We waited to say goodbye to you, Mother. I do not like thee, Lily Bell. The reason why, I cannot tell. But this I know and know full well. I do not like thee, Lily Bell. <laughs> She's been chanting that over and over all the way down here. Mrs. Savage, your children are leaving and they'd like to say goodbye to you. Would you like to say goodbye to them? Fireflies are out. How lovely. What makes the fireflies light up, Doctor? Are they mating? Well, I, I really couldn't say, Mrs. Savage. But I thought you'd know. Isn't this a bug house? <laughs> <laughs> no, this, <laughs> this is the cloisters. This is to be your new home. I am Dr. Emmett. Wouldn't it be fascinating if human beings, well, like fireflies, well, they were mating? What? Titus 
so we might as well go. She's going to be unpleasant again. Surely, Mother, you won't let us depart in this atmosphere of bitterness. Fifty needles and fifty pins and fifty dirty politicians. Herman, just take the long attitude. It's futile. Well, I will take care of this, Uncle Sam. We'll send more of her clothes down later, Doctor. We couldn't pack but one grip under the circumstances. Well, but Sunday is Visitor's Day, if you care to bring them down then. My sister's returning to Paris next week, but we'll make arrangements. Good night, Mother. Mrs. Savage, if there's anything you need, Miss Wilhelmina here will help you out. We have a lovely garden out there. You'll be able to see it in the morning. When I was a child, we always said 30 needles and 30 pins, but you've added 20 more dirty politicians. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fault of mine, exaggeration. It's stupid of me to try to irritate them like this. I just irritate myself. Well, I suppose it has to be exasperating now to be funny later. I noticed one of the dyes is gone. It must have dropped out in office. I'll look for it as soon as they go. Don't bother. It fell out last fall at the opera. I have found it. The usher was so nasty about mine, lighting matches during the magic fire music. <laughs> You know what this is, don't you? Suppose you'll tell me. It's a teddy bear. Surely you've seen one before. Not that big. Do you know what I do with it? I couldn't possibly guess. I sleep with it. Do you? Yes, I do, you. Are you going to treat me as if I were an imbecile, too? No, now. We mustn't be hostile. Of course not. You haven't harmed me. Would you care to know why I sleep with it? Do you care to tell me? I don't care. And I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I get lonely. I'm too old to have a lover and too fastidious to sleep with a cat. <laughs> then by all means, you must take it to bed with you here. Would you care to take off your hat? I suppose if I'm to spend the rest of my life here, I might as well. It's a really saucy hat. A ten-cent piece of felt and three chicken feathers. Eighty-five dollars. Why economy should be expensive, I don't know. It takes imagination. And the blood of pirates. But I want it. I wanted a hat like this since I was eighteen. For all the good it does me now. Well, I won't be needing a hat here. Maybe you can use it for something. I'm not at all sure what. Oh, I think you'd better keep it. You might need it. Oh, dear, dear. My hair looks like the matted end of a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think so. It's a heavenly color. You should have seen it last year. It was bright red. Then, just to be different, I dyed it black with a white streak down the middle. I looked like nothing so much as a skunk. <laughs> Finally, I just gave up and did the big room. It goes with everything. Well, it'll certainly go with your room. Would you like to go up and get settled? It's a time to lock me up. I wouldn't dream of locking you up. Did you bring a suitcase? My dog did. I wasn't consulted. Well, I'll go get it and take you up. There will be time to explore in the surroundings tomorrow. You can wait here. No, no. Of course. No handcuffs. We have the honor system, Mrs. Savage. Honor system, indeed. Hello. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Willie says the bars are only there to heat the world outside. Corny, isn't it? It's a lie. <laughs> The poor thing is quite harmless. It won't bite. It won't shed, lay eggs, or bark. <laughs> and to the best of my knowledge, it's unvexed by strangers. It wouldn't be less trouble. Well, in that case, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. <laughs> Perhaps we should introduce ourselves. You must be Mrs. Savage. I'm Florence Williams. 
How do you do? We've been waiting for you all afternoon. We're so excited to have you here with us. May you introduce Fairy May? Said you love me. <laughs> but we've just met. <laughs> well, you don't have to mean it. <laughs> I feel wonderful when people tell me they love me. Well, I'm sure everyone loves you. See? I told you all she wouldn't be spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the cloisters. Climb the best by government test. Thank you. And this is Hannibal. <laughs> this is our uh, Mrs. Patty. And how do you do, Mrs. Patty? I hate everything in the world. But most of all, I hate lightning, skunk cabbage, spiders, blisters, girdles, mice, keys, ragweed, chloroform, rhubarb, barnacles, bats, broken glass, eels, drugs, crumbs, tombstones, gallstones, salt, and thunder. Why don't you like rhubarb? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Savage won't answer you, or Mrs. Patty won't answer you. She'll only recite things she hates. <laughs> Sweet, but stubborn. Mrs. Patty stopped talking around 20 years ago. Why? Oh, she got mad. Her husband told her to shut up. So she did. She gave up conversation for life. <gasps> but she's only giving up electricity for Lent. <laughs> <laughs> You're a woman of wisdom, Mrs. Patty. There's only one thing wiser than saying very little. <laughs> That's saying nothing at all. Would you like to hold it? <laughs> she likes you. <laughs> I like her. Oh, you haven't met Jeff. Come here, Jeff. Please excuse my left hand. Certainly. Is the toothache? Jeff, Jeff's face is scarred and he likes to spare people. Well, you don't have to spare me. I have to look at myself every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Emmett refuses to let me wear a bandage. Well, we have to humor our doctors once in a while. And now you have met everyone. We are a small group in this wing, but we hope you find us comfortable to be with. <laughs> she hasn't met everyone. She hasn't met the Holy Terror. Of course. How stupid of me. Where is he, Florence? Well, he was here just a few moments ago. John Thomas! He, he might have gone into the hall, Florence. I'll see. John Thomas! You won't hurt her, will you? Gracious, why should I? You won't object, will you? Well, what is John Thomas? Her son. What did you think? Here? Oh yes, he was born here. I can't. Oh, look! Asleep on the floor. <laughs> my husband warned me I'd be a bad mother. Mrs. <laughs> Savage, this is my son. You like children, don't you? Everyone's but my own. <laughs> How old is he? Five. He's big for five months. No, no, five years. <laughs> I meant years. <laughs> Will you excuse me now? I have to put him to bed. He has measles. I do hope you won't touch them. <laughs> excuse me. That was exceedingly kind of you, Savage. Not to notice anything wrong. We didn't have time to explain, but you were like lightning. <laughs> Poor Florence isn't well. We pretend for her sake. Hope you will too. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I, I think you should understand right away, Mrs. Savage, that except for Florence, the rest of us are free to leave whenever we want. But we don't go because there's no better place to go. You are a very lucky woman to be accepted here, Mrs. Savage. If I do say it myself. And I do. <laughs> oh, do be quiet. Tyrant! What is that? That crude noise is a signal for all of us to go to our rooms. It's the evil of the machine age. Perfect pistons and no manners. <laughs> well, ours is not the reason why. I wonder why no one ever quotes the first line to that. It's someone blundered. Good night. I didn't hear you. We never say that. It means there's no more. No more of what? Oh, no more of so much. <laughs> Don't let Jeff's manners disturb you, Mrs. Savage. During the war, his plane was shot down in flames. He hasn't quite recovered yet. Oh, was his face badly burned? Oh, no, not at all. Jeff bailed out, but he was the only one. He lost his whole crew. 
His scar goes deeper than we can see. Surely you've guessed by now, Mrs. Savage, that Hannibal and I are the only ones who are free to leave. We pretend in front of the others to save their pride. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Patty. I didn't realize you were still here. I didn't need you anyhow. <laughs> Tear my tongue out. Will you excuse me? I have to go apologize or she'll start plotting revenge. Harry <laughs> <laughs> has the gift of the good for saying the wrong thing. Well, I should think it would take a bit of doing to apologize to someone who won't talk and sucks anyhow. You'll get used to Mrs. Patty. Just treat her like a clock. Look at her to see how the day goes, but don't expect an answer. She's happy at her easel. Is she an artist? I don't know whether she's an artist or not, but she paints. Portraits? <laughs> Seascapes. Which is rather odd, because I don't think she's seen the ocean before. <laughs> and as you can see, she's painting a wave. Right now. <laughs> yes. Are you sure? It takes her quite a while uh, to fully develop the painting. <laughs> I see. Yes. And Does she use only blue? <laughs> Mrs. Savage, I forgot to warn you. Don't sleep. If you go to your room, stay awake. <laughs> what did she mean about not sleeping? Oh, none of us sleeps here. Where do you sleep? Oh, we don't. Uh, we all go to our rooms. We agree to that in principle, but we stay awake. We never close our eyes. Because when we go to sleep, today ends, and, and when today ends, tomorrow begins. Today we are safe. Tomorrow we be filled with disaster. Could anything be simpler? <laughs> Not much. Today is the only certainty. Hannibal, you heard the buzzer. Why aren't you in your room? I am in spirit, and everyone says it's the spirit that counts. <laughs> Remember, fight the night. <laughs> Did they all come up to meet you? There was uh, Mrs. Patty and four others who have no business being here at their age. I quite agree. Do you think I belong here? We are understaffed, Mrs. Savage. I'm kept far too busy to have any opinion. I'd like to know what they told you about me. <coughs> Was there anything to tell? Did they mention my memorial fund? Not to me. Then they probably told you that my husband's death affected my reason. That would be understandable. But untrue. Why? Weren't you happy with your husband? I married Jonathan when I was 18. I loved him from the moment I met him until the moment he died. Do you know what that meant? I think so. Well, you don't, my dear. It meant that my only aim in life was to make him happy. To want what he wanted. To anticipate what would please him. And that meant that all the other things I ever wanted had to be forgotten. But surely you had no regrets. None. Well, he lived. But after he was gone, I remembered all the foolish things I had always wanted to do. And what had you always wanted to do? Things that would have shocked poor Jonathan. Such as dyeing your hair blue. That and studying French and ballet dancing, and people. As a girl, I'm sure I could have made a great actress. So, with no responsibilities and time running out, I decided to be one. But don't you think you waited too long, Mrs. Savage? I certainly do. Had I been a fool in my youth, no one would have noticed the difference in my old age. <laughs> I never knew he was old. Having kicked over the traces myself, 
and learned once again the importance of unimportant things. I decided I'd help others have the foolish things they'd always wanted. And how are you going to do that? By establishing the Jonathan Savage Memorial Fund, a fund for giving money away in memory of my husband. And that insane idea has brought me here. Well, you won't find it too unpleasant here. Shall we go up to your room now? At least I learned one thing from my French lessons. What's that? What I am, and a canard mort. That's a dead duck. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, it's not as bad as that. Yes, it is. Someday you'll realize the great injustice has done me. You'll know that I was always quite sane. But here I am, and here they'll try to keep me. My few foolish years taken from me. If people would walk around the edge of the carpet once in a while, it would save wearing out in the middle. Cast me as a witch. 
but you're a perfect witch. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Please speak some witch talk for us. <laughs> I'm afraid I didn't have any lines. If I had, it probably would have cost me twice as much. <laughs> Why did it cost you anything? I backed the show. If I hadn't put up the money, I couldn't have played even the mute witch. <laughs> but we made history. It's the first show that ever closed before the reviews were out. <laughs> <laughs> Was it expensive? Extremely. But worth it. What a pity. Weren't you discouraged? Bitterly. But man's by nature optimistic. If he weren't, he is young. <laughs> so I decided I'd write a play and star myself. You wrote a play? I did indeed. With a courage born of ignorance and a butt out of wedlock. What part did you play then? Naturally, the lead. Not guilty. Starring Ethel P. Savage. What does the P stand for? I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> my neurologist said I needed it in my name for luck. He was right. We ran a year. What was the play about? A mother who murdered a man and was defended by a young woman lawyer who turns out to be her own daughter. I had red hair and died in my daughter's arms every night and two matinees a week. Just as the curtains came down and the jury whispered, not guilty. <laughs> oh, I've never had a better time in my life. I gathered the notions were good at the time. They were sincere, <laughs> but it didn't make any difference. What did they say? The Times said my play set the theater back 50 years. <laughs> it couldn't possibly. Because I stole the plot from that MX, and that's only 40 years old. <laughs> Wouldn't you think they'd know? <laughs> but the Wall Street Journal was wonderful. What did Wall Street say? It said I had a tenacious mediocrity, unhampered by taste. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't good. It was perfect. In our ads, we simply said tenacious. And unhampered. Haven't you run a year? We'd have been running yet. My daughter hadn't come home and stopped me. So I know it was bad. The audiences only came to laugh at me, but they both had a good time. What more can you ask? I do miss it. Well, my turn is coming. I don't think it was very nice of your daughter. Don't! Oh, please don't! Mary, what's wrong? This savage is reading the newspaper! Uh, I would not do that if I were you, Mrs. Savage. You mustn't read it. Please give it to me. Please, Mrs. Savage. Now, just a moment. I know what it's going to say, so there's nothing you can hide from me. I've just been waiting for it to happen. Waiting for what to happen, Mrs. Savage? Why? Why what it says in the paper? But we don't know what it says in the paper. Then why were you trying to keep me from seeing it? We have an agreement. We never read the papers until they're a month old. We find we're much happier when we wait. <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting for? Why naturally we're waiting for... <laughs> what are we waiting for, Hannibal? <laughs> Perspective. <laughs> it's security. It's reassuring when it's over and nothing can be done about it. My dear people, there is something important in the paper that I'd like to know about and I'd like to know now, not next month. We're only trying to help you. The disaster is easier to digest when it's aged a little. <laughs> You're very kind, but I've made my bed and I'd like to know who's in it. Mrs. Savage from reading the paper if she insists. We don't know her well enough to be rude. That's his right. <laughs> well, if you read anything unpleasant, don't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> There's trouble in the world. It won't help us to know about it. This is yesterday's paper. I want today's paper. It isn't here yet. 
When does it come? Don't know. Is there a radio here? Yes, right over there. Maybe I can catch the news. Why didn't someone say there was a radio here? You didn't ask us. <laughs> it doesn't light up. Is anything wrong with the set? Oh, I don't think so. Of course, it hasn't any tubes. It hasn't <laughs> any... What? Tubes. Mrs. Patty steals them. She gets a little you know. No one knows where she hides them. Why didn't someone say the set had no tubes? You didn't ask us. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. How high is that wall? It's much too high. Well, it's, it's easily ten chairs high. <laughs> and I suppose no one ever leaves the great gate open. Don't look beyond the garden, Mrs. Savage. There may be a better place somewhere. But if you give this up to search for it, you may not find it, or lose what you have. You'll like it here after a while, Mrs. Savage. Oh, but not in January. The rooms get a little cold. <laughs> <laughs> we like you already. It isn't that I don't find you enchanting, <laughs> but, but you... But we what? Please don't say anything mean. <laughs> Do be still! We have to go, Mrs. Savage. But where? It's garden hour. We each have a little plot of land where you can plant things. You can plant anything you wish, vegetables or flowers. Last year, I planted bird seeds. <laughs> what, <laughs> what did come up, Barry? Nothing. But it was a rich horticultural experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and at the center, there's a beautiful evergreen. And at Christmas, it has lights on it saying, Merry Christmas, keep out. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me, Miss Savage. I'll show you my delphiniums. No, please go on without me. I have some serious thinking to do. I'll just stay here. But the buzzer buzz, Miss Savage. One has to obey orders. May I ask you why you're doing that, Mrs. Savage? Oh, I believe in wearing a carpet out evenly. Oh, how prudent. <laughs> I'm going to join you. <laughs> Don't you have to garden? This feels more constructive. <laughs> well, not too. We must all do our share. But I didn't mean to start this. <laughs> Why not? Most women lead us in circles. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey, you step on the leads. Hannibal will take buds. Miss Savage can have roses, and the rest of us will have thorns. Do you know what we're doing, Miss Willie? Wearing the carpet out evenly. Oh, someone told you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I hear the buzzer ring guard an hour? I didn't. I think it's broken. <laughs> oh, Barry, aren't you ashamed? Oh, I wish I were dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid this is my fault, Miss Willie. I didn't feel like gardening anyhow. <laughs> well, you've worked so hard with your flowers. Do you want them to die, Florence? I don't want anything to die. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Florence wouldn't hurt a fly. Why she catches them and lets them out the window. Flies adore her. <laughs> I think we'd all better go and work out in the garden. Barry, share your seeds with Mrs. Savage. Run along now. Aren't you going with them, Mrs. Savage? I wanted to speak with you. Oh. All right. What can I do for you? A great deal. And it might be that I can do a great deal for you. Are you about to offer me a bride, Mrs. Savage? How did you guess? Everyone does, at first. Still, my offer is a little different. I have the money. I'll give you $20,000 to leave that door open tonight. $30,000! <laughs> Don't you like us, Mrs. Savage? That's the most irritating answer to a sound business offer, my dear. <laughs> Forty thousand! <laughs> you could be free of this place too! 
but I don't want to be free of it. Fifty thousand! <laughs> you could go around the world, see Cairo, Mandalay, the South Pacific. But I've seen Cairo. I've been to Mandalay and the South Pacific. You have? I had four years as an army nurse. Still, you should be able to use fifty thousand dollars. Now, where would you get fifty thousand dollars? That's a fortune. Never mind. I can get it. And in the current idiom, fifty thousand is peanuts. Oh, I believe you, but I'm afraid I'll have to refuse. Then you leave me no choice but but to burn the place down. You wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, I would. Too many people here wouldn't know how to save themselves. You think of them first. If you believe I belong here, why are you appealing to my reason? I wasn't. I was appealing to your emotions. I'm going to get out quickly enough. It's it's just that driving you would have been cheaper. Now it'll cost me a couple million at least. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Miss Willie. Uh, is Mrs. Savage downstairs? She just this minute went out to the garden. What is her state of mind this morning? The usual pattern. She's already offered me a bribe. Well, what did she offer you? The highest yet. Fifty thousand. <laughs> Poor dear. Did, did she sound confident? Definitely manic. She talked as if she still controlled her own affairs. Well, Apparently, she does. This. I've just been talking to her children. They are practically out of their minds themselves. The senator is leaving Washington at once. He'll pick up his sister in New York and the judge in Boston, and they'll be here by tonight. This is the most amazing story I've ever read. When did they discover it? I, I gather this morning. The children asked me to confine her to her room. I don't understand it. How could she have gotten away with so much money? Well, apparently her husband left the estate to her, and she's been secretly selling out control ever since. Ten million dollars. That's a typographical error, isn't it? No, they, they had it all right. But what could she have done with it? Well, as Judge Savage says, goodness knows. She spends it? I doubt it. Will you call her, please? I, I think I'd better tell her what to expect. Oh, Mrs. Savage, would you come in here, please? Dr. Emmett wants to speak with you. Are you going to place her in seclusion? Oh, definitely not. But sometimes I wish there was a way of placing relations in seclusion. <laughs> they are always much more trouble than the patients themselves. <laughs> Do you think she knows what happened to the money? Oh, if she does, she's the only one. Is there any possibility that there's a method in her madness? You know, Miss Willie, I find it harder every day to say exactly where reason ends and madness begins. But for the moment, I must accept the presumptive evidence of her stepchildren. Well, from what I've heard, her son's record in Congress would give any good psychiatrist a nasty <laughs> turn. It, it certainly would. And, and the sensationalism of her daughter's six divorces does not speak too well for her emotional stability either. Did you want me, Doctor? Yes. Miss Willie, will you help Miriam out on the switchboard? She's been deluged with calls from the newspapers. Of course. Uh, please, sit down, Mrs. Savage. I think I know what you're going to tell me. <laughs> Do you? I see you have the morning papers. I wondered how long it would take them to find out. So, you're aware of your actions and their consequences? No, it's too early for consequences. And then I see it. The senator phoned from Washington. We can expect them by tonight. Indeed we can. Well, I'm not going any place. <laughs> Mrs. Savage, how could you have possibly spent ten million dollars without someone knowing about it? Who said I spent it? Well, the paper says you did. Oh, what do they know? I didn't spend it. I couldn't. I hid it. 
Do it. A nice half million dollar negotiable bond that can't be traced. Why? I don't ask you what you do with your money, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that this happened to you, Mrs. Savage. I'm afraid this hidden treasure of yours will prove to be a great disadvantage to you. That's because you're a doctor, and doctors never know the value of money. Would you like to know how long it would take me to earn that much money, Mrs. Savage? Oh, please, excuse me. I, I just came to grab my violin. Fairy May wants me to play while she plants her seed. Uh, just, just a moment, Hannibal. <laughs> you were a statistician. Tell me, how long would it take the average doctor to earn ten million dollars? Well, let's see. He'd have to start before Christ was born, <laughs> then work his way through the burning of Rome and St. Joan and Savonarola, with time off, of course, for the Norman Conquest, the Crusades, the Hundred Years' War, the Fifty Years' War, the Third Years' War, the Seven Years' War, and well, he'd have to work double time all the way through the discovery of America up to penicillin and bubblegum. And that's without deducting federal tax, state tax, school tax, city tax, electric tax, amusement tax, and well, you've had a hundred years for that. Thank you, Hannibal. It's a whole lot to be responsible for, Mrs. Savage. What's the doctor up to now? A bit of emotional blackmail, I suspect. <laughs> Hannibal. Would you guess to look at me that I'm worth ten million dollars on the hook? No, never. The human body has only got twenty cents worth of iodine in it, five cents worth of, <laughs> worth of phosphorus, and twenty cents worth of calcium. So even at today's high prices, no one's worth over a dollar and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so you only value me at a dollar and a half? No, no, no. You asked your worth. Your value is inestimable. I like you, Hannibal. I like you very much. You make me feel important. You make me feel like dancing. <laughs> Splendid. What shall it be? Anything. I'm quite good on the flight of the bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> Could anything be more appropriate? The bees come home and find the honey gone. Someone is going to be stung. Play, Hannibal. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I've been missing so much. My 
that this loves me. <laughs> now, is there anything else you'd like to have me clear up for you? Oh, nothing. Thank you, and forgive me. <laughs> Mrs. Savage. Yes? I'm keeping score, and the boys won't help me. What's seven and five and four? Forty-nine. Mrs. Savage. <laughs> it's my own sister, Hannibal. I refuse to submit to the tyranny of mathematics. <laughs> then I win. <laughs> I will be keeping score from now on. <laughs> May I interrupt you for a moment? Of course. There is something you can clear up for me. Why is it suddenly Sunday again today, when it was Sunday just yesterday? Why do you think it's Sunday? Well, if your children are coming to visit today, then it has to be Visitor's Day. And Visitor's Day is Sunday. Why, I must have had an awfully good time this week. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't Sunday, Fairy. My brood are coming back because they couldn't wait a week. Well, shouldn't that make you happy? It should, but it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, don't you like them? Not at all. <laughs> oh, I think that's a wicked thing to say. Well, we have to be wicked once in a while. But if it consoles you, Florence, they were not mine. My husband was left with three small children. But you must have liked them when they were younger. Oh, I wanted to make them my own, desperately, but they always resented me. Why, the first time I put my arms around Lily Bell, she bit me. <laughs> and she bit me every day until she was ten. <laughs> Why, that must have made you very high strung. What stopped her at the exact age of ten? I suppose at ten, the girl begins to consider her teeth. Look, boy. <laughs> so much better. Not always. He's been spoiled by money. And whenever I try to correct him, he breaks something I treasure to get even with me. It was a happy day when they went away to school. The school must have taught them something. Yes. French. <laughs> After that, whenever they came home, they spoke nothing but French. So I couldn't understand them. I haven't understood them since. <laughs> but you must be proud of me now. The senator's quite famous, isn't he? That he is, make no mistake. I'm told he receives more threatening telegrams than any <laughs> other man in Congress. <laughs> I believe Western Union lists him as a tangible asset. <laughs> if he's so unpopular, why do the voters keep sending him back to Washington? They're no fools. It's the only way to keep him out of the state. <laughs> the, the other daughter's a judge, isn't she? Oh, that's a distinction. She's made it one. She has the distinction of having had more of her decisions reversed than any other member of jurisprudence. <laughs> Is the other daughter pretty, Mrs. <laughs> There's a picture of her in the paper. I can tell you, and you can judge for yourself. Don't read us anything out of the paper, please. I won't. I'll just show you her picture. Hey, don't look at pictures either. People are always pinned up their trucks. <laughs> well, I'll just I'll just take a, a quick peek to make sure it isn't horrible. Well, even I don't say it's horrible. <laughs> She's a queen! She's wearing a crown! Oh, a queen? That's a Tiara fairy. It's an old picture of her taken when she was married to her Slovak prince. I suppose we should take a quick look, Hannibal, just to be polite. So she's a princess? No, she discarded the Prince of Good six husbands ago. Oh. But why? Hell hath no music like a woman playing second fiddle. But she kept the tiara? Indeed she did. <laughs> I suspect she sleeps in it. I don't know when I see a prettier tiara. That 
dress is cut rather low, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like her. Let's do something mean to her. Very. <laughs> well, I don't mean really mean. I just mean something like, like, putting her picture on the dartboard and throwing darts at it. Very. My dear, you're a sweet child. That's exactly what we'll do. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't. I need exercise, my dear. <laughs> Fairy, you're an evil girl to think of such a thing. Don't talk to me like that. I'm sensitive. <laughs> Leave her alone, to Florence. I'm the culprit. Now, let's see. What can I pin it up with? Oh, Mrs. Patton has thumbtacks. Oh, Fairy. I'm so disappointed in you. I wish I had died in my cradle. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, that's the loveliest seascape I've ever seen. Do you know, I can actually smell the ocean. I think your genius lies in your simplicity. You challenge the imagination. May I borrow more thumbtacks? It's setting a very bad example for motherhood. Do stop worrying, Florence. Don't you like surprises? Yes. <laughs> well, I want to surprise Lily Bell. <laughs> I'll tee off. Now, let's see. Target for the night. Oh. Right in the tiara. <laughs> <laughs> Something dreadful is going to happen, I know. Everyone to the upstairs study. Savage's visitors are here. I never meet strangers anymore. May I say, Miss Willie? I'm sorry, Harry, but the senator insisted on privacy. Hurry now, everybody out. One of these days when they're ordered out, I'm just going to leave without saying anything. I have as much pride as anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All the way upstairs now. <laughs> How's the weather out there? Stormy. Here are your visitors, Mrs. Savage. That'll be all if you can get outside. I'll leave the latch off and wait at the whole desk. I don't know what to say to you, Mother. For the life of me, I don't know what to say to you. Polite people say, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Deception is so unlike you. I'm not angry. I'm just hurt. Have you the faintest idea, the enormity of what you've done? You've sold control of 15 savage industries. We'll have to sell our stock in savage brass to buy it back. Oh, did you find out? I sold that one first. Oh, I mustn't get excited! I mustn't get excited! Oh, I get lines! <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else did you dispose of? Everything in my name. We're ruined! Where is the money? You couldn't have spent it! Tell us what you did with it, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I converted it into a neat little bundle of negotiable bonds and buried it. When you say buried, you mean hidden? I mean buried, as in funeral. In the ground? Oh, I feel physically ill. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it buried? I forget. Lord, oh, grant my mother one moment of clarity. Where did you bury it? Mother, is 
the money involved is how it concerns us so much as the disgrace of it all. Oh, whoa! What happened? She bit me! <laughs> Nonsense! Whatever mother might do, she never descended to bite it! was a wasp! <laughs> if there ever were a wasp, it's the woman we call mother! <laughs> I know when I'm bitten! Teeth marks! No need to raise your voice! Does it hurt? Of course it hurts! Lily Bell! <laughs> we will get nowhere fighting amongst ourselves! Now stop it! We can't afford it! You can't afford anything! <laughs> <laughs> we simply refuse to get angry with you, Mother! Now, Lily Bell, apologize! Oh, I will not! Lily Bell! Mattress, 
Of course, you're never very far from your mattress. <laughs> oh, if you were, and the house burned down. Are you going to tell me or not? Have you ever been to the museum? Natural history? No. Very educational. And fireproof. Oh, mother, please. Do you know what's on the third floor of the museum? How could I? The Department of Ichthyology. What are you talking about? Fish in the last room on the third floor, hanging from two wires, is a big, dusty porpoise. <laughs> well, I stuffed my bonds in that stuffed fish when no one was looking. <laughs> oh, I don't believe you. Name me a safer place. <laughs> Only a fool would do such a thing. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get a package of bonds inside a porpoise? Easy! A razor blade and scotch tape. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know you're telling me the truth? There's a simple way to find out. <coughs> oh, oh, you must think I'm so very gullible. I have no intention of hunting inside a set fish. <laughs> Are we to hold the card for you all night, Lily Bell? Sam is honking. Let her honk! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Evans will be with you in a few minutes. Titus? Yes? Kiss me goodbye. You bit Lily Bell. I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> That's ironical. Because I trust you. I was just going to tell you where the bonds are hidden. <laughs> Surely you know that I never wanted you here. I listened to Lily Bell. <laughs> <laughs> will you get me out of here and let me alone? You know I will. Then I'll tell you. They're in a tin box. Where? Do you remember when I went on a trip to Washington with a group from Actors' Equity? No. Well, I do. It was National Apple Week. We had lunch with the First Lady. There was Ethel Barrymore, Ethel Merman, Ethel Waters, Ethel What are you talking about? My bonds are buried in the President's hot house. I don't believe you. You didn't believe Pearl Harbor until you investigated. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do it in such an, a public place? Everybody in and out? Well, I'm not very bright. <laughs> I'm the only man who can't get into the White House. You should agree with him oftener. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know you didn't just make this up? There's one sure way to find out. Dig. Oh no. You did bury them there. I don't believe you. In the corner. Under the petunia bed. Titus, unless you hurry up, Sam is going off without us. Come in. I simply refuse to believe you. <laughs> we listened. We're horrible. <laughs> We're quite ashamed. <laughs> we all wish we were dead. We wanted to sneak away and stop listening, but we couldn't without making too much noise. <laughs> it's quite all right. It's no secret. If you've read the papers, you know. Did you really hide all that money? Well, I did indeed, for my memorial fund. And now you're giving it back. You're very generous for your size and weight. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't tell the judge where her share was. The prescription number was really a note saying to dig under the chimney. Why would you hide it if you were going to tell them where it was? And what makes you think I did? We heard you. Foolish I am, but not that foolish. Whatever is in the chimney, or under the president's petunias, or stuffed in that porpoise, I can assure you, it is not my little bundle of bombs. <laughs> then why did you say they were? I want to see to what extent they'll make fools of themselves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing makes the truth seem so shabby as a magnificent lie. How splendid. <laughs> 
How do you know they'll believe you? They want to believe me. Don't you think they'll find it degrading to go digging? But they will. How can you be sure? There are a million things a man won't do for five dollars. But there are five things a man won't do for a million. They'll dig. <laughs> Mrs. Savage, there's a rat in the hall! A rat as big as a mouse! 
considerable trouble. Again. I? Oh, Titus on the front page. <laughs> Senator trapped in White House hot house. <laughs> I've just been talking to him. He is exceedingly angry. 
imagine pulling up all those petunias? <laughs> what will everyone think? Savage. As a result of this, your position here has deteriorated significantly. And my disposition has blossomed enormously. <laughs> Anything about Sam? No, oh, yes, here's the Boston Post. Oh, dear, dear, poor Sam. All those bricks right on top of her. Chimney collapses on Boston tourists. Well, for some people, it takes a ton of bricks, you know. <laughs> How could they have possibly believed you, Mrs. Savage? They should be committed, shouldn't they? <laughs> Nothing about Lily Bell. Oh, your batting average for mischief is 100%, Mrs. Savage. Don't fret. What a horrible picture of Lily Bell! <laughs> <laughs> this would frighten even Fairy. According to this, she resisted arrest. So I see. Female vandal invades museum. Berserk Aerith bites police! <laughs> This is savage. What do you hope to gain from all of this? Better terms. For your freedom? And my husband's memorial fund. The children think that money could be put to a much better use. Of course, their own. Lily Bell settled over a million dollars on her six divorces. Sam and Titus spent as much to secure jobs to which they have no right. Is that better use? Your children find this memorial fund most unorthodox. That's absurd. There are plenty of charities for foolish people in desperate need, but none for people with a desperate need to be foolish. What brought you to that conclusion? My own life. No matter what we have, we never forget the foolish things we always wanted. I'm sure if Hannibal had been given a violin when he wanted one, he wouldn't need one now. That's, that's quite possible. I want my husband to be remembered with warmth and gratitude for a few foolish dreams that came true. I will not give up my memorial to him. I, I would like to talk about this with you further, but at the moment you have some guests waiting. <laughs> Senator, you may come in now. I'll be just outside if you need me. <laughs> My headache's gone! How dare you make a fool out of me! How dare you! You tried to kill me! You knew that chimney would fall on top of me if I started pulling bricks out, didn't you? We really know the very bright family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must be proud of me! You the name of Savage! I'll love to rage you again. Did you dare, Titus? <laughs> Eight FBI men jumped me. Jump my face into the dirt. Throw a plenty of bomb. <laughs> Why didn't you tell the papers the truth? Oh, sleepwalking, really? <laughs> you try to make an excuse with eight men on top of your chest. She'd love the chance. <laughs> <laughs> it was learned today that the senator's mother, Mrs. Ethel B. Savage, was recently committed for irresponsible actions. Democratic leaders were quick to point out that this might explain the career of strange behavior in Congress by the Senator! You realize what this does to me politically! Makes you a canard mort. That's a dead job. Friend, remember? Never survived it. Never! They treated me like a common criminal! I was fingerprinted! Oh, I meant to ask you, Lily Bell. What is in a stuffed porpoise? <laughs> do you know what the papers call us now? The Mad Savages! How do you like it? May I ask just what you intend to do now? Are you ready to listen to my terms, or would you care to dig in grants too? <laughs> we are prepared to come. If that means you'll see things my way, then compromise is the right word. I will consider effecting your release to the custody of someone for a period of time. That would look better for us. And I'd be willing to give her complete freedom if she gave up acting and lead a dignified life. Freedom, as Titus can tell you, is the right to make the wrong choice. 
What would we get? That's what I like about you, Titus. No nonsense. You'll each receive a reasonable yearly allowance. Uh, how reasonable? Well, I shall be generous, but the bulk of my estate must be given away by my fund. Oh, it's completely mad! We might have the commitment revoked, only to have you play another trick on us! Where would we be then? Where are you now? Get it over with, Titus. Very well, Sam, ready to retract. I'm tired of having my decisions reversed. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm released, I'll keep my promise. But I warn you, don't have me follow. Oh, Sam, wait a minute! What is it? I found the answer on the cover of this medical journal. What are you talking about? A way to avoid your compromise. But I have to see that Dr. Emmett first. Are you going to sign that petition, Lily Bell? <laughs> Titus, don't you sign anything until I return. Lily Bell, wait! Who's she ever? Who knows? Something to trick you. If you listen to her again, you'll end up without a set. What'll I do? Finish it! Lily Bell's gotten us into enough trouble. Uh, how many T's in commitment? Three. Two! <laughs> that doesn't look right. It's me. Give it back! All it needs to say is that the commitment was ill-advised and request release. Will this satisfy you? It will when you sign it. Sign it, Sam. Oh, what are you doing? You're signing the letter. Sign it, Lily Bell. Uh, it isn't necessary. You'll regret this. You have no right to act without consulting us, Lily Bell. Do be quiet. Read this. Read what? The article on sodium pentothal. It's a... Oh, perhaps I better let Dr. Evan explain. Will you tell them what sodium pentothal does, Doctor? Well, it's, it's, it's generally used in cases of shock. It, it relieves a patient's tensions. It removes inhibitions and makes them susceptible to suggestion. It's called the truth drug. That's that's not quite accurate, however. Oh, but under the influence, the patient answers truthfully. Isn't that so? If they answer at all, that is. Now you understand? Did you want me, doctor? Yes, Miss Willie, just a moment. Dr. Emmett, get some of this truth drug and give it to my mother at once. Haven't I any rights at all, doctor? Dr. Emmett, may I say something? Surely you aren't going to listen to these people. It's a flagrant misuse of science. Doctor, I order you to give this to my mother! Mrs. Savage, if I refuse, your guardians are well within their legal rights to remove you from my authority. I am confident they will find the means of subjecting you to the influence of sodium pentothal elsewhere. Then let someone else be responsible, Doctor. Ten million dollars hidden from use does no one any good, least of all you. It remains an ever-present symptom of psychotic thinking. This is your chance to prove you are capable of making a rational decision. An intelligent mind can recognize defeat. Well, let it be known that I was not forced to my knees by science. I'll tell you where the bonds are. Wait! Oh. We've come to the rescue! <laughs> Too late. We'll stand by you, Mrs. Savage. We just happen to be listening. Okay. Shame on you! And you! And you. Who are these people? These are my friends. Hannibal, weren't you asked to stay upstairs? I want to protest, Doctor. And you give me the right to protest, sir! I love you all for wanting to help me, but Dr. Evan hasn't much of a choice, as you must have heard. What will you do, Sam? Give them the bombs. I think you've made the right decision, Mrs. Savage. Well, are you going to tell us or not? I'm going to show you. We are going to show you. <gasps> you heard it! Here's your treasure. My goodness, she's had it with her all this Oh, 
patience. Oh, Mrs. Patty, what? Where's Lily Bell? She's disappeared. My gracious, what are you doing down there? <gasps> <laughs> She came in, turned off the lights, took the bonds, and ran. Miss Willie, find Mrs. Patty. Notify all guards to stop her before she destroys those bonds. Of course. I can't bear it. I simply can't bear this. I'm going to be there. Searching the basement. But did you find that woman? Not yet. Then what did Evan say? Was the gun good? Come out! Senator, we are taking every possible precaution. That maniac has ten million dollars worth of negotiable bonds. If they're not found, they can't be replaced. What will she do with them, Doctor? Oh, she'll probably eat them. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but we are sure to find them. It just may take a little bit of time. Years, probably. <laughs> they were right in front of us. What in our grasp? Why didn't you stop her? How was I supposed to know? The lights were going out. It's quite possible Mrs. Patty didn't take them at all. Of course she did. No one else could have taken them. You could have. Lily Bell was head beat from the table. But she's mighty quick when it comes to money. <laughs> Personally, I think she took them and stuck them down her front. Why don't you serve her? <laughs> you, you didn't take them, did you, Lily Bell? Can't you see she's trying to make us suspect each other? Someone else could have taken them. You was closest to the table when the light went out. He was right beside it. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? It wasn't me. I don't like bombs. Please, bumblebees, prickly heat, bat snacks, pills, pots, pans, butts, 
spiders, worms, germs, cacodons, and politicians! Oh, <laughs> what are you listening? <laughs> Madam, did you hear what I asked? Senator, there is no need to shout at Mrs. Patty. She hears you well enough. But she won't answer you. She hasn't answered a question in 20 years. Don't play any tricks on me. Don't make her mad, Titus. She carries a knife. Oh, oh. Mrs. Patty. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Patty is hostile, yes, but she is quite harmless, I assure you. Now, will you be kind enough to yield the floor to me, Senator? Very well. But I want to hear her talk. So do we all. Mrs. Patty. This is very important. So, uh, could you nod your head yes or no to the questions that I ask you? Good. Now, did you take those bonds from the table a few minutes ago? <laughs> she did, and she did. Oh, this is so exciting! I wish we could open a door and have a body fall out. Miss <laughs> Patty, look at me. Did you turn out the lights a few minutes ago? <coughs> yes, you did. Do you remember seeing a little bundle of papers on the table? Try to remember. Think. <laughs> Doctor, I I found them. Oh, Don't hang over! But, sir, I'll take short of this. You said you found the bomb! I said nothing of the sort! Radio tubes! <laughs> It's the basement in the hot air duct we can clear this room. I told you all my room got cold in the winter and you never believed me. <laughs> Dr. Emmett, I hold you completely responsible for this fiesta. <laughs> Just what would you suggest that I do, Senator? Search her! She may have hit another on her birthday. Now this may prove to be an issue. <laughs> I'll focus on making her talk! Very well. <laughs> Miss Willie, will you take Mrs. Savage to her room and search her carefully, please? No, 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 no. Take me. I'm youngest and move the quickest. <laughs> <laughs> or, or we can just draw straws. <laughs> you first, Fairy. Oh, I don't want to miss anything. Oh, thank you. <laughs> will you come with me, Fairy? <laughs> Did you know? I was once asked to play Lady Godiva in the Elks pageant. I did it. My mother was afraid of so many Elks. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Pat, wouldn't you like to save us a whole lot of trouble? <laughs> Haven't you some sort of threat to resort to here? <laughs> I don't threaten my patients. Now, look, Mrs. Patty. Oh, the truth drug! Of course, use the truth drug. That'll make her talk. I'm afraid it's out of the question. We would need her guardian's consent. Very well, we'll get it. Who is he? Her husband. We'll phone him. Where are they? Japan. Well, <laughs> in his absence, don't you have the authority to act? Senator, we have no proof she's taken the bonds yet. I still think Lily Bell was your <laughs> Dr. Emmett? Y yes, Jeff? Since Mrs. Savage can't have her bonds anyhow, I think I can help you. Yes? Miss Patty will take the bonds. How do you know? Because I took them. She's the thief! What do you mean by the I I don't know. I I don't have them. I, did, did you take them, Jeffrey? Yes, sir. Well? No. I searched Fairy Doctor. She doesn't have them. Speak up. I, I, I threw them out the window. <laughs> Doctor Emmett, Miss Willie, something awful. 
awful is happening. There's a fire upstairs with flames. This high. <laughs> you mustn't. Company. <laughs> well, they were this high at least. Fairy, will you just come in and sit quietly, please? But there's a fire, please. You have to believe me. There's a fire upstairs. Where? In the bathtub. <laughs> Fairy, sit down. <laughs> Jeff, if you did take them, where did you put them? I told you, he couldn't have taken them. Of course he couldn't. If anyone should know that, I should. Now I suppose you took them. I confess everything. <laughs> There's a fire upstairs. There's a conspiracy down here. <laughs> Lawrence, where did you put them? I won't tell you. Yes. 
What happens to me? You have nothing to worry about, Judy. You'll be quite alright. We never allow you to be sent to a public home. We are savages! <gasps> goodbye! We say goodbye to people we don't want to see again! <laughs> Maybe she thinks her tub is cracked. <laughs> this is Savage. Did you, did you think you could change them? No one changes people. But one makes changes people learn to accept. I had hoped to make them look like fools, so they might look with understanding. Oh, he has a good heart. And who are the fools of good heart? I'd say those who gamble on people and invest in kindness. Those who doubt that position means privilege or that manners mean morals. And of course, the rebels with no fear of failure. That makes good sense, Mrs. Savage. And justifies my being here? I see no reason for your remaining. Does that mean I am free? Well, I, I could let you go on my own accord, but let me talk to the state medical examiner and then I'll let you know for sure. And I can go pack your things, just in case. We can always unpack again. You hate us. <laughs> Why do you say that, Fairy? You want to leave us. Why, Fairy, I must. Is someone waiting for you? No. Does someone need you? No. Well, well, you can't leave yet. I haven't had time to give you a going away present. Maybe I can find a suitable gift anyhow, if you won't be fussy. I'll go look. I'd like to see what I can find for you too, Mrs. Savage. Will you wait? Oh, this is so fun! Come on, everybody, let's see what we can find. I have something to look. I just want to But don't leave before we get back, or you won't get anything. I'll try to find something useless. I do it for practical gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything in my room you'd like, but I do have something on me that I treasure. It's, it's my class free. Inside, it says, let there be light. <coughs> Something Mrs. Patty would like. <laughs> but I can't take the ring off your finger, Hannibal. But I insist. It has as much value as gold goes, but as blood goes, it's a statistical treasure. <laughs> My finger has pumped blood in and out of this ring every two minutes for ten years. <laughs> that is nearly 200,000 gallons of blood. <laughs> it's too much, Hannibal. <laughs> Can't seem to get out of my computer. Keep it, Hannibal. I appreciate the offer, the sentiment, and the statistics. I think it's got too much fat on either side of the <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Hannibal. You've worn it for so long, this has become a part of you. I am all out of breath. Feel my pulse. <laughs> Why, fairy dear? But I found you something. I hope you didn't expect much, because then you won't be disappointed. <laughs> I won't be disappointed. I couldn't find anything to wrap it in besides Kleenex. You can feel my pulse too, Hannibal. Thank you. <laughs> About 104 beats per minute, I'd say. <laughs> How very nice. What, what is it? A handkerchief. Oh no, it's a napkin. So many places serve paper napkins these days, and all they do is blot or smear. Bless you, fairy. I'll take it with me whenever I'm invited out. And look, it says the cloisters. Wasn't that lucky? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fairy found something first. What did she get you? A hand-picked napkin. Well, then it fits in perfectly with my gift. Lawrence, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Salt shaker. And full of salt, too. It's engraved. It says the cloisters on it. 
<laughs> You've gone to too much trouble. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> Is it sterling? My fairy, I wouldn't dream of giving Mrs. Savage anything that wasn't sterling. Oh, it's dented. I got very dents are what give an antique character. Indeed they do. Well, I'm not going to say goodbye. I can't stand goodbyes. I don't recognize them. You didn't expect us to say goodbye, did you? I didn't expect even a salt shaker. <laughs> well, how do you do, Mrs. Savage? We have so much forward to meeting you. We're so glad you're finally here. Please make yourself at home. Oh, I almost forgot. John Thomas asked me to give you something for him. He's afraid you'd catch his measles if he gave it to you himself. <laughs> <laughs> Come, fairy. Let's pretend it's garden hour. Oh, yes. Excuse us. We have to take leaves. Take an umbrella. It's raining. Oh, Jeffrey, what did you bring? Just a book. What is it? The Lifespan of the Ape. <laughs> Do you know, I've never read it. I was lucky, wasn't I? I'll read it tonight. Well, Mrs. Patty, we thought you'd forgotten us. What did you bring, Mrs. Patty? How did you know this would be just what I needed? May I see? A genuine mother of pearl button. I'll sew it on at once. I think it's intended to make an eye for the bear. Bless your angry heart! <laughs> Having only one eye. I hate everything in the world. Uh, I hate everything in the world, but I hate everything in the world but you, and, and I love you, and I wish you would leave us. I... Why, she said she loved me. Well? Aren't you amazed? You knew it all along. Yes, but. She spoke. She had to say. Well, Jeffrey, shall we see what the girls are up to? It's a lovely night and everyone is like. Watch out. Don't break your neck. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have everything. Here's your $85 hat. I told you you'd want it again. My beautiful and foolish hat. You know, I think you've been wearing it backwards. You know what? I have. It's good to be straightened out. Where did everybody go? They gave me going away presents and then refused to say goodbye. I'll bet I can guess what they gave you. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Patty gave me an eye. I wish to see myself. Florence, a grain of salt to take with what I see. That's good. And very, a memory of loveliness. I'm afraid to most people she wouldn't seem like a lovely girl. She wears her plainness with great beauty. And Jeff? The Book of Job. Nothing from Hannibal? I'd say he gave me an appreciation of music I never had before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have something to give you to. You behave yourself. It isn't much. It better not be. My bonds. Except for the corner of one I had spurned at the newspapers to make it look convincing. Oh dear, where did you find them? I didn't find them. I stole them when the lights went out. Why? I'm not sure. Don't tell me you're a kleptomaniac. <laughs> 